Hi everyone, good morning. Just waking up, making some coffee. But we're gonna be pulling out of here today and going to a new location. There's kind of a story about why I was not planning on leaving here for another couple few weeks. But we have to go, we've been told we have to leave. I'm gonna take a lot of flack for this video. <laughs> But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post it because this is, for me, it's a unique situation, what happened here. And uh, I want to share it with everyone. Oh, the coffee smells good. Well, we're pulling out because we've been told to leave. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, buddy. I didn't think about that. He's sitting right in front of y'all. I'm going to have to move the position of the camera. Make it lefty proof. Well, this kind of stinks. Um, so we're going to be driving over. This is the Kaibab National Forest. We're going to go to the Coconino National Forest, which is right down the road. It's just saying to Dottie and Tara, it took us, it took me longer to pack the truck up than it's gonna take for us to drive to the new camp. Okay, that's a little better. So let me tell you the story about why we're, why we're leaving here. So we've been to this area this is the fourth time that we've camped in this area in this exact area and the other three times we stayed uh, had no contact with any of the 
the forest rangers. Um, now this time we came and we were here, we, we got here on a Saturday and a week and two days on Monday. So we had been here nine days. This ranger pulled up to me and just so happened that a guy, Jim, uh, that I know, a friend from the channel, he had stopped by and him and I were standing outside chatting and this ranger pulled up and said that they were going around to everyone to make sure that everybody was aware of the 14 day stay policy. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, so where are you planning on going next? And I said, I really don't know, maybe Utah. I don't really have any plans. And he said, so he goes, when did you get here? And I said, seven days ago. And he said, really, you sure about that? And I said, wait a second, what's today? Monday. Said, I said, no, nine days ago. He goes, you sure about that? Because we've got video of you. I said, no, I'm absolutely positive of that. I have it in my calendar. I was, I came here a week ago Saturday. And he said, uh, so, okay, well, I'll take your word for it. And while we're talking, he's getting communications over his radio and, you know, talking to his little mic there on the shoulder. And he's got bulletproof vest on and he's, you know, he's geared up. And the ranger never talked to me. Now, until this ranger pulled up and talked to me, I have never, I've never had a conversation with a forest ranger or a BLM. I'm not sure what they're called, their titles, but I've never had anyone come up and talk to us about our camping, not even to just chit chat. I've never, I've never had any contact with, with any of those personnel. So this guy, like I said, he talked to me after I'd been here nine days, told me that I had a clean camp and he wasn't gonna bother me. Yesterday, he pulled up, I was outside, I was cleaning the air filter on the bike, and he pulled up and he said, didn't I talk to you the other day? And I'm like, oh yeah, early last week you talked to me. He goes, didn't I tell you about the 14 day policy? And I said, yeah. He said, well, what do you, why are you still here? And I was, I was dumbfounded because I'm here because you told me you weren't gonna bother me if I stayed long. And I said, I don't really have any plans to go anywhere else. I'm waiting for weather to improve in other places uh, before I move on. And so he went on to inform me that I was breaking a federal law and it was, it was an arrestable offense staying over 14 days. And I said, I said, really? I did not know that. And I, I didn't. Again, in three years, almost three years of traveling, I've never had contact with any of the, the Rangers. But he told me that I could be arrested for what I'm doing. And cattle guard and so he I could hear on his radio that he had called in my license plate and she was uh, the, the woman on the other end of the radio was I heard my name and it's an old 2002 Ford and you know so he was running my plates then he wanted my ID and you know I just I have not yet gotten to the point where I immediately go and grab a camera when this kind of stuff happens. And I know I need to get better about that. Uh, the picture that I have, Dottie took it from their camp over next to us. So I don't have any camera footage or audio, unfortunately, and I really wish I did. I wish I had audio of the first meeting with him where he said he wasn't gonna bother me. You know, definitely I was over two weeks. I was, uh, I was two weeks and five days yesterday. So absolutely, I was over two weeks. 
but just going on historical, I've never been bothered. I've never been bothered on the last three visits here. I've already spent about but, uh, four or 500 bucks in town between grocery shopping and diesel and showers and water. And, and I would continue to do that if I was still camped here. So he got my ID, ran all that. I'm not, you know, wanted or anything. So he came back and gave it back to me. He laid it on the chair because he didn't want to come around near where Lefty was. Because Lefty was raising holy heck. <laughs> um, he said, well, he goes, well, you, you look like a decent guy. Here's what, I, here's what I can do for you. He said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything other than I'm going to give you 24 hours to leave the Kaibab forest. And I said, done. Deal. So that was at 1 p.m. yesterday. It's 10 a.m. the next day. We're leaving the Kaibab forest. We're going to go 27 miles down the road to the Coconino National Forest, and we're going to camp there. Uh, it just really surprised me. The whole thing really surprised me. So they've got this little detour here. I don't know that it shows up the angles and everything, but it's quite a steep dip right here. 
and then okay, and then a really off camber climb back up onto the road, and then it continues on. So just this little section right here is uh, the challenge. I don't like the high center because it's so built up in the center. If there was no people around, I'd grab my shovel and <laughs> clear that, but there's a bunch of people around. Construction over this way. Looks like somebody already scraped and broke something here. See this pile, this mound in the middle? I wish that wasn't there. All right, let's do it. What the heck? What are we going to do? They're probably watching me thinking, that, you know, what kind of wackadoodle is this guy over here trying to clear the road? Come on, buddy. Let's do it. Come on. I wouldn't be surprised if we do a little bit of scraping. Yeah. Okay, Sugar, I'm putting it in gear. We're going to do this. All right. Wish us luck. I'll talk to you soon, Sugar. I love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Easy. Yeah, we dragged. I knew it. It's okay. Oh, we're just going to pull over and check some stuff, okay? Hold on. Yeah, we dragged the uh, trailer hitch. Not a big deal. It was soft dirt. I knew it was going to happen. You could get out there with a shovel and flatten that out. A lot of rocks right here. Hush, hush, hush. Here's our new camp. So this area, 20, about 27 miles from where we just were, it's definitely drier here. Um, the ground is drier. You know, where we were, it was there was a lot of very rich, loamy earth, and this is just drier. Um, so a lot of pine, obviously. I don't see anyone else where we are. I didn't, I saw one group that was camped like right as we came into this area, like right at the beginning of it. Uh, and then that's it, I haven't seen anyone else. So thanks for coming along on this little trip and hearing the story about uh, my encounter with the forest ranger.